As a controller main, I had never truly understood the hype around high impact 340 RPM pulse rifles. That 0.67 second TTK 2 burst just felt too unreliable on the sticks. I couldn't consistently reproduce it. No time to explain, the messenger, as good as these weapons were, in my mind they never truly dominated the console meta. But Elsie's rifle, the new 340 RPM pulse rifle with Into the Light, changes that mindset completely. Elsie's is hands down the best pulse rifle I've ever used on controller in Destiny 2. I've never felt so confident in my ability to slide out and hit the two burst. There's a lot to unpack here. Deterministic recoil, head seeker, which has been recently nerfed, and I've had plenty of people telling me to avoid it. But in this video, I'll show you why it is still an absolute force to reckon with, regardless of resilience gating, and not to mention in final shape, you'll be able to enhance these perks as well. So LC's rifle is a void 340 RPM pulse rifle that has pretty good stats across the board. It has virtually the same same stats as no time to explain but with a larger magazine but comparing it to the messenger you can see it has six less range but that's more than made up by more stability more aim assist and way more handling which overall results in a more responsive experience than the messenger so i want to start off by discussing recoil direction and barrels at base 73 recoil the gun has pretty awful recoil direction it veers diagonally upwards into the left going to 88 with counterbalance the gun still veers to the left but slightly less so than at 73. The desirable recoil patterns are at 98, which is something like chambered compensator with counterbalance, or 100, which is arrowhead break on its own, which allows it to shoot far more vertically. For most roles, you will notice the recoil direction, but one perk does negate this completely. And because it gets rid of this horrible recoil direction, I think it's absolutely mandatory on this gun. And that's Zen Moment. In that first column, we have Zen Moment, a perk that powerhouses like the Messenger, like No Time to Explain, lack. Zen Moment gives you a stacking bonus to reduce visual weapon shake, reduce reticle bounce, and provide flinch resistance with each hit up to five stacks. Honestly, it's so noticeable, even within that first burst after hitting your first couple of bullets, there's no issue regardless of what recoil direction you're running. And although the first shot may not be benefiting from Zen Moment, that is the time in the duel you should have the least flinch, the least bloom, so it is manageable in my eyes. Zen Moment in that first column is a complete game changer on console and for controller players on PC. It gives you that consistency to allow you to hit those two bursts. In that first column, we do also have Keep Away, which gives you a 10 range and accuracy bonus, but I found that Keep Away wasn't viable unless I had those 98 or 100 recoil direction rolls. And even when I did have that roll, it still didn't have the consistency that Zen Moment provided. So Zen Moment hands down over Keep Away, regardless of what input device you're on. For the second column, there are a few good options. Kill Clip boosts your damage by 25% after a kill on reload, allowing you to now hit 50 per headshot, meaning you can kill someone in just five bullets in just 0.6 seconds, even at 10 resilience. Desperado requires a precision final blow and on reload reduces the firing delay by 30%, meaning the gun now fires around 440 RPM. This results in roughly a 0.55 second TTK, which is similar to Kill Clip, but when you factor in the fact that you require a precision kill for this to proc, whereas Kill Clip can be proc'd off body shot kills as well, in my mind, Kill Clip does come out on top. Both Kill Clip and Desperado are good Good for quick play 6v6 modes, but the consistency king is Headseeker. Headseeker procs for about half a second on hitting a body shot and improves the precision multiplier for the pulse, not the overall precision damage, by 11.75%. And it provides more aim assist for those follow-up shots. Now in game, Elsie's hits for 23 on the body and 41 on the head. And after Headseeker procs, the headshot value goes up to 44. Now Destiny has visual rounding and these aren't the true damage values in actuality. D2 Foundry says the body shot value for this archetype of weapon is 22.00 to two decimal places and 40.08 for the headshot, which is actually very different in terms of calculating what a headseeker burst can kill. Now there are two ways you can two burst someone with headseeker proct in most scenarios. Body shot, headshot, headshot, and then on the second burst, all three headshots, or on the first burst, headshot times three, and then body shot, headshot, headshot on that second burst. In practice, I found the second permutation more common just because the first burst tends to be your more accurate one as you have less bloom, less flinch at the start of a duel. So I tested that second combination across various resiliences. Headseeker still killed Guardians, 
within that magical two burst with a body shot up to and including nine resilience that's absolutely huge. You're going to be two bursting a lot of hunters, a lot of warlocks and a lot of titans as well. And that was only with testing for that second burst having a body shot. If we actually do the first permutation where we hit a body shot first up in that first burst, then the perk actually lasts long enough for your first headshot of the second burst to also receive bonus damage. And then you can actually kill even 10 Resilience Guardians as well. So Headseeker in my eyes is still absolutely cracked, allowing you to have more forgiveness, up to nine or even 10 Resilience Guardians, depending on when you hit the body shot. Now let's go for my overall God roll. I'd recommend Arrowhead Break, Ricochet Rounds, Zen Moment, Headseeker with a range masterwork and a sprint grip mod. This results in nearly 37 meters of range, perfect deterministic recoil with an S tier consistency perk and an S tier forgiveness perk. The reason I use sprint grip is because I find the only downside to pulse rifles is if you get caught out of position mid sprint. They just don't ready up as quick as something like an SMG, a hand cannon or a sidearm. And sprint grip just makes the gun feel so much more responsive if you're actively mobile. But like I said, don't worry if you don't get arrowhead break. Something like small bore and hammerforge rifling with the same roll is also extremely good. Remember, Zen Moment does a lot of the heavy lifting here. Just remember to put a counterbalance mod on so you don't have the worst recoil direction. But there you have it, my god rolls for the LC's rifle, which in my eyes is the new king of pulse rifle rifles in the current meta. And for once, I think a high impact pulse is actually going to dominate in the console meta as well. If you enjoyed what I talked about, remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Destiny weapon reviews for both PvP and PvE. I'm Mr. Ronit, and that's it for today. Peace out, guys.